Brian. My group and I will be discussing the topic of wireless access for vehicular environments. We will offer some insight on how this principle is achieved and its security concerns. First, I will present a brief introduction to offer some information on WAVE. Then Jennifer will tell us about the IEEE 802.11p amendment and what the BSSID is and how it's utilized in this context. Later, Ray will be joining us remotely to offer some insight on basic service set. And lastly, Kia and Lucia will be discussing security concerns as well as possible resolutions. All right. The application of wireless access for vehicular environments, or WAVE, is an innovation that will aim to support Intelligent Transportation Systems, or ITS. The new standard intends to provide reliable wireless communication for vehicular environments. The WAVE principles define an architecture that jointly enable vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure wireless communications. With the necessary equipment installed in the vehicles and on the road, WAVE will improve vehicle safety, automated tolling, enhance navigation, and traffic management. With crucial information being passed flawlessly between vehicles over 802.11p, safety on roads can be dramatically improved through features such as forward hazard warning. However, weaknesses in these networks can also make them targets for attacks. The major challenges in WAVE were due to the fast-changing communication environment and short durations of communication due to the high mobility and speed of vehicles. As a result, it was difficult to broadcast a large amount of data in such networks for vehicle-to-roadside and or vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. These difficulties are resolved thanks to the implementation of IEEE 802.11p, an extension to the existing IEEE 802.11 principle that will define the improvements required to support intelligent transportation systems. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I'm going to be talking about the IEEE 802.11 standard as well as the new edition IEEE 802.11p amendment. IEEE 802.11 is a set of media access control and physical layer specifications for executing wireless local area network computer communications. IEEE 802.11p is a relatively new amendment to the 802.11 that addresses the previous wave concerns raised by rapidly moving vehicles complex roadway environments and communication establishment challenges. Basic Service Set Identification, which is abbreviated BSSID, is the name of the BSS recognized by radios at the MAC level and it is 40 bits long. Each of the BSS requires a unique BSSID, which is verified by using the MAC address of the access point. At the MAC level, filtering for the BSSID is the key mechanism to restrict incoming frames received from radios that are members of the same BSS. Data frames in each of the IEEE 802.11 take up to four address fields and are used to carry the BSS ID, source address, destination address, receiving STA address, and transmitting STA address. When the frame is received, it uses the information of an address field to perform address matching for receiving decision. 802.11p, what is it? It's an improved standard in IEEE 802.11 that enables wireless access in vehicular environments, also known as WAVE, and creates a vehicular communication system, an infrastructural-based service set that anchors by access point, which grants our over-the-air link. Two services we'll be discussing are basic service set and basic service set ID and file filtering. With our BSS, there are two types, independent BSS and infrastructural BSS. In our independent BSS, there are ad hoc networks that contain no AP, since they cannot connect with any other infrastructure, they are limited to range. Infrastructure BSS are quite the opposite of independent BSS. Infrastructure BSS can communicate with other stations that are not in the same basic service by communicating with each other via APs. Next level of our BSS will extend on the service set. An extended service set, ESS, is a set of connected BSS, which can operate via APs in a distributive system. Each ESS has an ID called SSID, containing a maximum of 32 bytes character strength. Hi, I'm Kia and I'm going to be going into the security. So although the new 802.11p standard aims to provide the reliable wireless communication for vehicular environments and offer several facilitations and improvement, weaknesses in 802.11p Vehicular wireless networks could also make them targets for malicious attacks. IEEE 802.11p is considered a WLAN or wireless local area network for future traffic safety systems. 
The physical layer in 802.11p affects the reliability of the system. If we do not get channel access, the benefits of the physical layer cannot be exploited. The MAC method is based on carrier sense multiple access, or CSMA, where the nodes listen to the wireless channel before sending. CSMA has a disadvantage. The nodes could experience unbounded delays due to constantly sensing a busy channel during high utilization periods. This is not acceptable in real-time systems such as traffic safety systems. These traffic safety systems are considered real-time systems because of the timing requirements for communicating probable vehicle collisions before the occurrence of one and the relay of data, and if the data does not reach its intended target by a certain deadline, it is deemed useless. There exists potential risk for traffic control systems that will soon rely on 802.11p communication for traffic flow, tow collection, and advisory. The transponder communicates with the roadside unit or the RSU and then links with the system to take the set amount of money out of the registered user's bank account and or credit card. The risks with these RSUs are possible imitation, which is important to restrict physical access to these units and secure the data stored within them. We can also use encryption keys that are necessary to protect the stored traffic in the RSUs. A man-in-the-middle attack could be executed by a DOS attack, which could deem the collision avoidance system useless, leading to a possible collision on the roadway. A man-in-the-middle attack could potentially result in the stealing of private data from onboard units such as transponders as it is sent to the RSUs to pay tolls. The wireless communication medium is one of the major challenges in vehicular communication and it will of course cause some implications in security while transferring information. When dealing with wireless communication with vehicular environments, there are several vulnerabilities we have to take into account and common threats to security. A variety of attacks can be presented. Intruders may track the vehicles with the intention of having control on the wireless communication, and intruders can sniff packets and change them to send false messages to the destination or even block or prevent a packet to be delivered, among others. Some techniques that are used to prevent these attacks are anonymity, which is applied by using certificate and make the communication anonymous or even randomize the internet protocol and MAC address of onboard units to avoid tracking the vehicles. Authentication is the technique public key infrastructure and certificate authorities can be used in order to provide authentication for messages and based on the importance of messages, different levels of encryption would be applied. This technique prevents sending false messages to vehicles. Implementing trust model. This technique is used to prevent attacks in the safety applications. The application is isolated from the believed to be an untrusted operator, while in e-trade applications, conventional trust model is being applied, and in public ones, the operator is considered being trusted. Hi, my name is Lucia. When it comes to the threat of authenticity in the field of security, ensuring the validity of the network includes protecting authentic nodes from broke insiders and outsiders, infiltrating the network under a false identity, detecting the presence of black holes, identifying attacks replaying authentic interaction, exposing a spoof GPS signals. Despite the potential gains to be made in terms of network manipulation, there are strong technical difficulties in carrying out a replay attack, rendering this a minor threat known as GPS spoofing. GPS spoofing is the use of a GPS satellite simulator to generate radio signals stronger than those received from the genuine GPS satellite. An attacker can lead nodes to believe they are in different locations than they actually are, potentially causing collisions. If GPS time is used to time span messages, a spoofing of the GPS could result in nodes accepting expired messages as new ones and could thus lead to a successful replay attack. Finally, we have threats of confidentiality. With the messages exchanged between the nodes of a vehicular network being accessible over the air, the threats of confidentiality include the illegitimate collection of transaction information through eavesdropping, the collection of location information available through the retransmission of broadcast messages, Outside eavesdropping and inside eavesdropping are two of the threats of confidentiality that can be presented. Referring to outside eavesdropping, broadcast messages generally pertain to traffic safety information 
and are therefore uninteresting for purposes of eavesdropping when it comes to inside eavesdropping. As long as the insider notes collect information in keeping with the terms of an agreement with the user, there is no problem. However, there is a possibility that an insider may collect information at a time when the user is unaware of the collection. For example, a travel and sales agent may have an agreement with an employer to have his or her movements tracked during business hours and not after work because the impact on the user means no more than an annoyance that threat is considered minor. In conclusion, addressing security issues in the ITS environment is really challenging since conflicting goals are characterizing the system design choices. In particular, the following trade-offs can be identified. Liability versus privacy. People driving vehicles need to be monitored and assisted in their actions. This naturally exposes an issue of user privacy protection. Global mobility versus trusted authorities. In some scenarios, vehicles move worldwide and this poses the challenge of trusting credentials provided by authorities of several different locations and countries. Mobility versus trust. Vehicles move fast and this leads to just short connection time with other vehicles as well as with roadside units. Consequently, long-term trust relationships are difficult to maintain. In conclusion, Vehicular Networks is a technology that will allow numerous applications from global internet services to active road safety applications. Several applications were shown that make the use of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure communication tools. Furthermore, we discussed the variety of the applications, ranging from media downloading to traffic safety applications and how they require very prerequisites to support vehicular networking technologies. Vehicular communication security is an essential matter having a great impact on the upcoming deployment and application of vehicular networks. Therefore, threats, possible attacks, and vulnerability concerns have been examined. Topics such as anonymity and authentication are crucial and more investigation is encouraged. I really hope you found this presentation informative and thank you very much for watching.